Isaac Newton came up with a set of three laws of motion. The most famous is that of F equals MA, or force equals mass multiplied by acceleration. Or more importantly for us, the rearrangement of acceleration equals force divided by mass. This is extremely important to keep in mind, especially when designing vehicle physics, because what it means is that to accelerate a mass, the larger the mass, the more force required, and that the same force on different masses will accelerate differently. For example, given a car with weight 1,000 kilograms and a force of 5,000 newtons, you can obtain an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. The same force on a 100 kilogram car would result in an acceleration of 50 meters per second squared. What does that mean for our wheel suspension? Well, we've a spring with an upward force acting on a particular mass. The greater the mass, the more force the spring requires to give the same upward acceleration to the car. The bigger the mass, the more compressed the spring. However, in a vehicle, there are also many other forces to consider. First, we have the dampening force that we can set. That represents a downward force that makes the spring much more rigid and less likely to bounce. It slows down its recoil. And then you also have gravity acting on the car and pushing down on the spring. So the spring needs to combat both gravity and dampening to give the same effect on different masses. What does all this mean for you? Well, what I'm trying to get across, I guess, is that when you start programming the physics in these systems and working with suspension and springs and different masses, that you keep in mind your own real world experience. You know, you know logically and instinctually how physics works because you're in that world constantly all day. Therefore, don't let your intuition go out the window when you start programming this stuff because it's all programmed based on real life physics. So keeping all that in mind and what we've learned so far about wheels, I've got a little bit of a challenge for you. So I've got three wheels set up here and I'll press play and you'll see the different effects on each. So uh, first of all, you've got a very bouncy one. Then you've got kind of a mediocre bouncy one, which fails its physics test through the ground and disappears. And then this one, which isn't doing very much at all. What I'd like you to do is to create these three tires and set their physics attributes. So what I've played around with to get these are just the suspension settings and also the rigid body settings that are on each of these tires. Let me just show you those again. And I'll put a few loops of this in so that you don't have to keep replaying to see what they look like as you go through into your challenge. So once you've got this down, pause the video. And then when we come back, I will just go through the settings I've got on each of those tires. So how did you go with that challenge? Let's have a look at the settings on my wheels. Now you might've got something close or um, used even different settings to get the same kind of effect that I did. Let's have a look. The first one, let's go to that really bouncy one that's over there. So let's just replay to have a look at that and concentrate on it. So it's very bouncy. Okay, you can see that it's moving quite a lot. Let's have a closer look let's just pause it there if we can get in a bit closer and you can see that my suspension distance I've actually changed is quite long there I've also got the target position for it set to zero so right down the bottom now remember when you set that target position to zero you get something that's way more bouncier than if it's set to one and when it's set to one, it has a really strong dampening effect. Okay, so the mass of this tire, if we go into the inspector, is set to one. So it's just a kilo tire. 
uh, or the body that's sitting on it is anyway. Its mass for the actual wheel collider itself is still a 20. So it's still the same size wheel. It's just got a mass sitting on it of one as far as the extra mass that's trying to be lifted up. Then there's no other changes to the setting of the rigid body. Now, of course, what I've done here is I do have a suspension distance that I've increased to 1.5. The center has been raised to 1.56. The spring is quite strong as far as its force, so it's 50,000. And the dampening has been turned down by a notch too, so it's only 450 with the target position of zero. So it's only those values and these values here and the mass that I've changed. Okay, so let's have a look at the middle tire, which I think is this first one here. This is the one whose physics system kind of breaks down and goes through that ground. So let's play, have a look at it. So it's kind of bouncy, which is nice, but then it fails. Let's have a look at it. So its mass is a thousand, so it's still the same heaviness as it was before. The suspension distance is set to one and you can see that it comes all the way up to there. The target position is still set to 0 0.5 that we've used before. The spring force is the same, so 35,000, but the dampening has been turned down. So it's this damper that's giving us the extra little bit of bounce in this particular case and gives you that nice bouncy effect. Kind of a bit better than that one. Um, the only problem is, of course, it does break through the ground, but when you have four of these things on a vehicle, they don't fail in that same kind of way. And finally, we have this last tire here, and let's just have a look what it does again, and it just drops to the ground. There's a little bit of a bounce in it, but then it kind of comes to rest. So the settings for that, the mass is still 1,000 and the suspension distance is 1. But in this case, the spring is set to 35,000 and the damper is 4,500. Now, I believe they're actually all the default values. Uh, so that's what the default tire does in this case. Okay, and that's actually more of a realistic and nice kind of physics but if you're creating a game with different types of cars with different suspension systems and you're going to get a lot of different effects going on which could make it quite challenging as you change the configuration of your car all right so that was your challenge let's move on now and start putting a little programming on the wheel to move it around so the first thing we need to do with our challenge tires is actually just get rid of those two extra ones. Let's just go back to our initial family car tire. And what I'm going to do is just check that that still has all the default settings on it. So it's a thousand mass and it's same suspension and mass there. Radius is all the same. The spring is 3,500 and it is Damper is four, five, and it should be four, five, zero, zero. And let's just press play on it to make sure it's gonna be okay for our needs. Yep, okay, so that's a good tire. Okay, so let's now create some code. Okay, so in our assets, let's right click, create C sharp script, and let's call it drive. And then open that up. And we want to get hold, first of all, of our wheel controller because we're going to add some forces to it. So public wheel collider WC. Now we also want to set up a torque value. So we create a public float torque and we will set that to 200. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. So when we're talking about force before, it was a linear force. Now when we're moving a wheel, we're actually adding a rotational force to it because we're rotating the wheel. And this torque is being affected 
on that little sphere. Remember the sphere that's attached to that wheel clotter and that, that position on the wheel. So we'll set it to 200 here, but you can then change it in the inspector. In the start, we need to get hold of our wheel collider. So we'll just go uh, wheel collider equals this dot get component. And we'll get the wheel collider in there. And then in update, we're going to use the up and down arrow keys to add some acceleration to our wheel collider. So we'll create a float acceleration equals input dot get axis. We want the vertical ones for the up and down arrow keys or the W and the S keys. And then we're going to apply that acceleration to our wheel collider, but we're going to do that in another method. So let's just create that first. So it's going to be a void go and we will pass through float for acceleration. Then inside of here, we will put acceleration equals mathf.clamp between the values of minus one and one. So that'll allow us to go forward and backwards, minus one and one and therefore it's acting as a kind of percentage amount of the full torque that can be added and so the longer you hold the up arrow down arrow the more that acceleration will get closer to negative one or one which will then multiply by the torque to give us our actual torque that we're going to put on the wheel so we'll calculate that here float and we'll call it thrust torque equals acceleration multiplied by our torque that we're passing through. And then what we're going to do is apply that to the wheel. So WC dot motor torque is the um, property we want to set. And that equals the thrust torque. Okay, so then down in update, we can actually call go with the A passed through to it. I'm keeping this go as a separate method because we'll start to build on it and eventually we won't have key inputs for our artificial intelligent drivers. They're going to actually just be able to run the go using another method, obviously, to figure out what they're doing. So keeping the whole code in here will mean it'll apply for the player controller as well as any NPCs that are in your game. Right, so let's just save that. Let's go back into Unity and we're going to drag and drop that onto our tire. So put drive onto there and just check that it's been added. Okay, press play. And now we can drive, not very successfully um, because it fails and goes through, but you can use the arrow keys and you will get a little bit of torque applied. Let's see. Yeah, so you can see that it is actually applying. Okay, so we're actually at the point where we really do need to add a car body to this system. That's where our cube we added before comes in. So if we just turn our cube back on, we're going to now turn this into a car or some kind of vehicle. So there's that cube, and I'm just going to resize it like this. Okay, I'm going to grab my tire and just bring it back to there and kind of position it and then uh, duplicate it and put one there and then we want to duplicate that and put it on the other side you don't want to turn that tire around at the moment I know it will be facing it out the wrong way that that's okay duplicate it again and put another one there. Let's just make sure that they've all been assigned. It doesn't really matter whether it looks like a proper vehicle or not. It's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so there's our makeshift car. Now that cube, I'm just going to rename that as car. And then we're going to add onto it a rigid body. 
and make that rigid body 1000. Then for all of the cars, tires, you want to select them and just remove the rigid body off of it. So each of those wheel colliders has the drive script on them. Therefore, it's going to drive all of them at the same time. The car provides the rigid body. Now we just need to grab all of those tires and make them children of the car. So just shift select them and drag and drop them onto the car. Right, so let's press play and have a look what we've got. And now if you use the forward and back keys, we have a moving vehicle. Now you can't see the actual colliders and what they're doing. So just select all your tires and then press play again and you'll be able to see them rotating. Possibly, I might need to turn my gizmos on. There we go. Okay, so there you go. Now you can see them rotating in the game view as well. Right. So that's working so far. And what you obviously are noticing is that our meshes aren't turning. So we want to actually make those meshes turn around as well with the wheels. So let's go back into our code and make a few modifications to get those working. So let's go back into our drive script. What we want to do is align the mesh with the actual wheel colliders position. So up in go, we're going to add in here First of all is a Caternian. Caternian, and we also need to get hold of the position of it. So vector three position. Now what we're going to do is put some values into those, uh, getting them from the actual wheel collider. So it's WC dot get world pose we want out position and out caternian and then what we're going to do with those is apply them to this dot transform dot position equals position and this dot transform dot rotation equals the caternian rotation. So as we move the collider, we want to reposition the mesh, or in this case, it's going to be the game object that's holding the mesh because that's where the transform is. Save this and let's go back into Unity. Right, we're going to play this and it won't be what you expect. So just press play and the wheels kind of run away with themselves and disappear. So what has happened? Well, I know what's happened uh, and this might explain a lot about the way that the car system is set up if you've looked at that before. Don't have enough time to go through that right now in this video, but when we come back, we're actually going to fix this up so it does work properly. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.